So we talked about briefly, we talked about the hot mix asphalt design, the mix design. We already talked about the structural design, which was the ASHTO method that we determined um, the thickness of each layer and the properties of each layer from the ASHTO method. And then there's a, an advanced version of the design methodology according to the pavement ME or mechanistic empirical design method that we will uh, probably discuss uh, hopefully by the end of the semester. But uh, this part of the class is focusing only on the mixed design. For example, uh, you wanna know how much coarse and fine aggregates and how much binder, what type of binder uh, you need for your asphalt, hot mix asphalt or HMA mixed design. Okay, so the requirements for, and, 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 and I forgot to mention that uh, today is the global Earth Day. Um, and you can check out a lot of um, online events happening around the world. And uh, uh, most of them are exciting events that you can join for free. Okay, so the requirements for, requirements for mixed design. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a sufficient um, asphalt or binder, so sufficient asphalt to ensure uh, durability. We also want to have a stability under traffic loads. So stability under traffic loads. That's uh, one of the major things that we want to see or we want to expect from our pavements. Uh, we also want to have sufficient air voids. So sufficient air voids. Uh, we want to have a maximum air void, so upper limit to avoid uh, environmental damage. So to avoid environmental damage. And also we want to have a minimum air void to, um, or uh, we have a lower limit for initial densification of the of the mix under the traffic load. So, and the lower limit to allow densification under traffic loads. Right? And then and, uh, the, uh, another criteria is, of course, sufficient workability, right? Uh, we want to have a workable mix so that we can lay it down and compact it to reach the, the optimal density. So sufficient workability. That's another thing that we are looking for. Now, uh, the, the overall, no matter what type of method that you're using for your uh, mixed design, there are specific steps um, that you are following. The first one is mixing. That you basically place preheated aggregates. So place preheated aggregates. In preheated bowl. And add hot asphalt or hot 
uh, bitumen. It's important to preheat the aggregates and also preheat the mixing bowl uh, to make sure that you are mixing at a, at a, at a specific temperature and you're not uh, dropping below a certain temperature so that you make sure that your asphalt, um, your mix is, uh, or your asphalt is completely covering the aggregates. And then uh, the next step is to, to place the bowl in mixer until aggregates are well are coated or are completely coated right so uh, that's the the mixing process i'm going to upload um, three pictures for the mixing process so that you will see uh, how the mixing process actually looks like in the lab the next step is the compaction um, Based on what type of mix design method you're using, uh, if you remember from last session, I'm going to go back to the mix design methods up here. Uh, we discussed that uh, we have uh, the historical or the more traditional uh, old methods are Marshall method. This is still some some cities and some uh, DOTs they are still using Marshall mix design to um, to evaluate their their mix design criteria requirements there was a beam method that again some DOTs are still using parts of that that method and the new uh, so these are the old methods and the new method is uh, called super pave or super pave gyratory uh, method that we mentioned that is coming from the superior per, uh, performance of the pavements right so uh, back to the compaction process based on what type of uh, method uh, you're using for your mix design. If you're using um, Marshall mix design, then uh, you will be using a Marshall hammer and Marshall compactor. I'm gonna upload the, the picture of the Marshall compactor here. If you're using a gyratory compactor or the gyratory compaction method, you will be using a gyratory compactor uh, that we discussed uh, last session. I'll post a picture here that you that if you remember, uh, we had a mixing bowl at a, at a at a degree. So this is um, the mixing. This was the gyration degree. And this is the mixing uh, plate or the mixing uh, mold that you apply uh, a rotational uh, movement as well as applying a, a pressure, an actual pressure to create uh, samples. These samples are either uh, uh, 150 diameter by 110, so 150 millimeter diameter by 110, right? either small samples, right? Or we have uh, taller samples for different types of testing. Uh, these are, again, 150 millimeter in diameter and then these are 164 uh, in height. That's the compaction process. 
uh, and then uh, uh, after this you will do uh, different types of testing. Okay, now going back to the basics of the uh, mixed design, there are specific properties uh, that we are expecting from an asphalt concrete. So asphalt uh, concrete properties, right? We want our asphalt concrete to show these properties. And these are um, stability, uh, workability, Uh, skid resistance and durability. So uh, we're going to define uh, all of these one by one and see what we mean by each one of these. So the stability, by stability I mean, we mean the ability to withstand traffic loads. So this is the, the ability to withstand traffic loads. Uh, without any distortion or deflection, uh, especially at higher temperatures. So without uh, distortion or, or deflection, especially at higher temperatures, especially at higher temperatures. Right. Uh, so to 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 get enough stability, we need to use uh, rough, dense graded, and cubical aggregates. So use uh, rough, dense graded, uh, and cubical aggregates. And we want uh, enough asphalt coating on aggregates uh, to provide the stability. Uh, the next one is workability. So we want our asphalt mix to be workable enough so that we can uh, place it and compact it. So the definition is the ability to, so the ability to place and compact with reasonable if effort. So with reasonable and also without segregation of the coarse aggregates and without segregation of coarse aggregates. Right? So uh, this is the, the requirements for the workability. We also want to have uh, enough skid resistance, right? So skid resistance Um, because we want to have enough traction um, or enough resistance or uh, in, in especially dry conditions. So we want to have proper traction in wet 
and dry conditions. And then um, the last one is we want to have a durable mix. So durability is the last one uh, that we want to have in our asphalt mix. Uh, and that's the ability to resist aggregate break, uh, breakdown. So the ability to resist aggregate breakdown. Uh, and then when it's uh, happening due to uh, wetting and drying or freezing and thawing. So wetting, drying, or freezing thawing process. Or excessive, or excessive interparticle forces under traffic light. Um, so when we have these kind of properties uh, that the aggregates won't break down in the wetting and drying cycles and freezing and thawing cycles, uh, we can say that we have a durable mix, right? And then the last one is the resistance to stripping. And that's the, uh, the, the separation of asphalt um, cement coating from the aggregate. So if there is not enough cohesion between the, the asphalt concrete or the asphalt paste and the aggregates, uh, the aggregates will be separated um, from uh, the, 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 the surface of the aggregates uh, will be, uh, the, the coating will be released from the surface of the aggregates and then the aggregates were go are going to be exposed. So separation of the asphalt cement, separation of the asphalt cement coating from the aggregate from the aggregate uh, and this happens due to the presence of water right due to presence of water between asphalt and aggregate. Right, so we don't want this to happen. And then the last uh, problem um, in similar to this one is bleeding. Uh, and that's the uh, migration of the excessive asphalt binder to the top surface of the pavement. Uh, you've probably seen this happening on the road surface that you have uh, small patches of uh, thick asphalt layer, dark asphalt layers on the top. That's uh, the, the bleeding problem. Sometimes it can be also water, not just asphalt, um, but it depends on the what type of problem you have in the, in the pavement mix design. So the migration of the migration of of asphalt cement to the surface of asphalt cement to the surface of the pavement 
to the surface of the pavement. Uh, and that's all, of course, happening under the traffic load. So under uh, wheel loads. Especially at higher temperatures. Uh, so especially at higher temperatures. Right. Uh, so th th these are the, the basic problems that we don't want to see um, happening because of the uh, problems in the mix design. Uh, the next one is fatigue cracking. Uh, this is similar to the alligator cracking that uh, you've been investigating in, in, the, in one of the class projects on Google Maps. Uh, and this happens uh, when you have repeated the uh, uh, traffic loads on the on the surface of the asphalt concrete so cracking due to cracking due to repeated flexure uh, repeated flexure of the asphalt concrete of the asphalt concrete um, due to traffic loads. And the last one is uh, the, the, another type of tracking, the cracking that we want to avoid is thermal cracking. Um, so thermal cracking. Uh, this is the one that's the, that's the result of inability to, uh, to adapt to sudden drop in temperature. So uh, cracking as the result of cracking due to inability to adjust to a sudden drop in temperature. If you suddenly um, have a, a freezing day um, and your asphalt concrete cannot adapt uh, to that uh, thermal difference or thermal gradient difference, um, then you will be having a thermal cracking problem. Okay, so mixed design basics. So these are the, the properties that we are expecting from our mix. And uh, uh, these are the basics of uh, mixed designs to avoid those uh, problems. So mixed design basics. Uh, the first one is we want to have uh, the right gradation of as uh, 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 of aggregate or right type of aggregate. So the correct uh, the right type of aggregate. Uh, this will avoid. Uh, uh, related to or 
related to stability problems, uh, durability, uh, stripping, and a skid resistance and skid resistance. So these are the problems that can be avoided by choosing the right type of aggregates. Uh, by choosing the correct or right type of binder, so the right grade of binder. If you remember, we talked about the performance grades in the super paved mix design. And so if you use the grade, the, the right grade of asphalt binder, uh, asphalt binder, then you can avoid, this is related to, um, to fatigue cracking. So you can avoid fatigue cracking. You can also avoid the thermal cracking and also you can resolve the stability issues, right? These are the, the, the problems that can be avoided by using the correct type of binder or uh, asphalt cement. And if you want to, uh, or if you choose the correct uh, mix volumetrics, that means uh, the correct uh, asphalt binder content as well as uh, correct aggregate gradation and uh, contents of each type of aggregate in the mix, so the right, as well as the, the air voids, the right mix volumetrics, uh, volumetrics will give you, or it's related to the stability problems, uh, durability, um, stripping, bleeding and, and skid resistance. So stripping, bleeding and skid resistance. So by choosing the correct type of mix volumetrics, you can avoid all of these uh, problems in your, in your mix, right? Now, when we're talking about aggregates, uh, we want to have specific criteria or specific properties for aggregates. And that includes uh, for aggregates, the, the aggregates needs to be strong and durable. So strong and, and durable. Uh, it also needs to be cubical. Uh, it has to have low porosity. It has to be clean, rough, and uh, hydrophobic. Is that it has the ability to repel water, uh, hydrophobic. Oops. Okay, um, so it has to be hydrophobic, uh, has to be enough hardness, and it has to be dense graded. Right, these are the, the properties of the aggregates that we are looking for in our uh, mix design. So uh, uh, last week we started briefly talking about the uh, the super big mix design, but we mentioned only uh, briefly the the old the older versions, the Marshall and Ve and and Veeam mix designs. Again, although these are the old versions, and um, but still some cities and counties. 
or, or even some uh, DOTs, they are still partially using uh, these methods, especially the Marshall Mix Design method. So it's, it's good to have a, a quick background or a brief background about the, uh, this type of mixed design. Okay, so um, let's have a quick look at this and then we go back to our super big mixed design. So Marshall mixed design steps. Marshall mixed design steps. Um, first of all, you need to uh, take on and, and uh, prepare your aggregate blend. So prepare uh, aggregate blend to, to meet gradations, specifications, or to meet specification requirements. Um, the second step is to establish a mixing and compaction temperature. So establish, uh, establish mixing and compaction temperature. And, and this is related to um, the, the viscosity uh, of the of the mix and, uh, and also the viscosity of the asphalt binder. So this is coming from um, the viscosity uh, temperature uh, charts. Because you need to have or you need to reach a specific temperature uh, for your asphalt binder to be able to be fluid enough or, uh, or viscous enough to, to coat all the aggregates. Then the next step is to compact and prepare uh, tree samples. So compact three samples at each of the five asphalt. So you basically select five different asphalt contents um, and you at each for each one or at each asphalt content, you prepare three specimens in the lab or three uh, uh, small cylindrical specimens in the lab. So three samples, or let's call them specimens. That's a better name. Uh, three specimens at each of the five um, asphalt contents. Right. Um, to find the optimum asphalt bind, to find the optimum um, asphalt content. Right, and then the the next step is determining the 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 relative density of each specimen, and then also the, the all the mixed volumetrics. So determine the relative density, and also all the mixed volumetrics and mixed volumetrics. Uh, and that includes, uh, I'm going to define these uh, right now. That includes GMB, VTM, VMA, and VFA. Okay. And then uh, once you have your specimens and you determine the mixed volumetrics, uh, you measure the performance properties at a specific temperature. So measure. Uh, performance properties at uh, properties of each specimen, each 
specimen at um, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now, um, what about all those uh, mixed volume metrics that we mentioned above? These are the ones that we need to know uh, when we are designing uh, hot mix asphalt, either for the super pave method or for the uh, Marshall method. Most of them are, are um, used for both methods. Uh, so, okay, so VTM, VTM is uh, voids in total mix, voids in total mix. And then we have VFA, that's voids filled with asphalt, filled with asphalt. Then we have VMA, that's uh, voids in mineral aggregates, voids in mineral aggregates. Um, then we have the F to A ratio, that's the fines to asphalt ratio, fines to asphalt ratio. So fines is basically the, the very fine materials, usually passing number 200 sieve. Uh, we also call them filler materials because they are uh, bonding with the asphalt, uh, asphalt content, asphalt binder, and they are forming a paste. Uh, then we have uh, GMM, that's maximum specific gravity, so maximum specific gravity. Uh, then we have GMB. That's bulk specific gravity. So bulk specific gravity. This is not for the specimen, but for the for the mixture. So this is for the mixture only, uh, because for the specimen it doesn't make sense to measure the bulk specific gravity. And then uh, there's a test method that we uh, uh, estimate the moisture susceptibility, uh, and that's called tensile strength ratio test. So TSR is tensile strengths ratio. So that's the, these are the basic uh, parameters or uh, definitions that we need for pretty much most of the, uh, the mixed design methods. Now going back to the Marshall mixed design, uh, the compaction steps. So Marshall mix design, mix design steps. Um, the first one is compaction. Again, as we mentioned, I'm gonna put the picture of the asphalt of the Marshall mix design compactor here. It's basically, uh, It's basically a weight, um, the specific weight uh, dropping on on the sample. If this is a sample, you're basically dropping this weight uh, several times on each side of the sample. So the number of uh, the drops, so number of drops, number of Marshall hammer drops uh, 
it depends on the uh, on the traffic level. So if you have uh, uh, light traffic, if you're designing for Okay, so if you're designing for um, uh, light traffic for a very, uh, for not a busy, uh, for example, a local street or something like that, the number of drops, this is the number of uh, drops um, you, per side. And we, we call this per side because you drop, let's say 35 times of this hammer on the specimen and then you flip the specimen um, to the other side and you do the same thing. So the number of drops per side is uh, 35 for light traffic. For medium traffic, that's 50. And for heavy traffic, uh, like, like an interstate or something, that's 75 drops that you're, you're basically simulating the, the traffic by um, the number of or the, the level of compaction. Uh, the next thing you need to know is to um, how to measure Marshall stability and flow. Stability and flow. So stability is basically uh, the strength of the of the Marshall sample or the that the cylindrical specimen under the load and flow is how much deflection uh, you will be seeing in the uh, in the sample. So what you do is there is a specific um, device in the lab that they have, uh, that you place the sample within uh, the device uh, show me actually okay um, so your sample is at 140 degrees Fahrenheit and you're applying pressure. These are the, uh, the, the compaction device heads on the both sides of the sample. And you put a sample right in between those two. Um, and then you apply the compaction, the, the load until the, the sample starts to crack and fail. Uh, there is a displacement sensor connected to the uh, to the sample and there is also a load frame a uh, load cell uh, connected to the device that measures how much load you are applying so based on uh, how much load you're applying and how much uh, so this is uh, load in pounds and this is deflection And usually we show it in 0 0.01 inches and the graph should look like something like this, right? Um, this will be the top strength or stability. So that's the, mag that's the maximum load that your sample can withstand before breaking down. And at that point, uh, your deflection is the actually is actually the flow number. So we are looking for these two um, numbers in our mixed design process. And I'm going to put the picture of the Marshall testing specimen here, so that you will see that in the notes later. So Marshall testing device. Okay. And then what do we do? Uh, with all these numbers. So the, the, the third step is finding uh, uh, 
optimum binder content or asphalt content. How do we do this? Uh, we have, a, it, again, as we mentioned, we create or we prepare the specimens at five different asphalt contents, right? So if you have uh, your asphalt contents, uh, asphalt contents in percentage, let's say you start with 3.5 here, and you have uh, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, and 6.5, right? And then um, on this first graph, you're showing the unit weight of each specimen. Uh, that's pounds per cubic feet. Um, so by showing the unit weight for each of these samples. So uh, remember we, we mentioned that for each sample we are, for each binder content, we're preparing three samples. That's because we want to eliminate any lab errors and we average um, the numbers or the outputs of the three samples for the three specimens. So if you plot this for each uh, of these five binder content values, you're gonna get a graph like this, right? So at four, you have this much, at 4.5, five, and so on, right? And from this graph, we are looking for the asphalt content that would give you the maximum unit weight, right? right? So this is the maximum unit weight. Uh, so that would be your first reading. The second reading should be from the Marshall stability uh, graph. So we create a similar graph to this one. This time, uh, you again have asphalt content on the x-axis in percentage on the x-axis, right? The same numbers. And this time on the y-axis, you have the Marshall stability number or the, the strengths. So Marshall stability. So again, uh, each one of these points, that's the average of average of three specimens. Uh, the, the Marshall stability is basically the, the maximum load that the sample that each specimen can withstand. And if you plot this, you're going to see something like this. This graph will look like that. And again, at each of these points, um, you have a number that you can create a graph. Again, from this graph, you're looking for the maximum strengths or maximum, and uh, this is maximum uh, stability. And you read the, the asphalt content here. So let's call this AC asphalt content number two. This is AC number one. And then there's a third graph that you, again, you plot um, the asphalt content. So x-axis is the same, asphalt content in percent at the same asphalt contents that you have. This time you are plotting air voids, right? So the y-axis here is air voids in percent and um, if you think about it the more asphalt content that you add to the mix you have less air voids in the mix right because you are basically filling out more voids with asphalt right so uh, the the graph in this case will look like something like this right Again, at, at each point, and these are the points that you use to create the graph. 
And this time, uh, we're not looking for a maximum number, but we are looking for a specific number. So the, the, the number that represents 4% air voids, this is 4% air voids, that number will be our third reading uh, of the asphalt concrete or asphalt concrete uh, contents, right? Now, the final uh, uh, solution or the final answer uh, for this case will be the, the optimum, we call it the optimum asphalt so optimum, optimum asphalt content is the average of these three. So AC1 plus AC2 plus AC3 divided by three, right? So for example, if your um, example, if you're reading uh, from the first graph, you're reading 5.1, uh, from the second one, you're reading 4.7, and from the third one, you're reading 4.3. If you take the average of those three, your optimum asphalt content will be 4.7%. So that's the, the asphalt content that you uh, you add to the mix and you make sure that uh, you're reaching um, your design standards. And um, there is a table here. So I'm gonna include the table here. There is a table by Asphalt Institute. So this is uh, Asphalt Institute criteria. Asphalt Institute criteria. Uh, for uh, Marshall Mixed Design. Uh, basically, they are, they are defining different levels of stability flow and air voids for different levels of traffic, um, right? So I'm going to insert that, that table here so that you can uh, take a look at that later. So that's basically uh, the, um, the concept of uh, Marshall mix design and the process of the Marshall, Marshall mix design. And uh, now we can go back to our super pave. Um, so we can go back to super pave. Um, again, this is calling coming from superior performance of pavements. And uh, the, it was developed by SHARP or Strategic Highway Research Program. So developed by Strategic Highway Research Program. Or SHRP, or we call it SHARP. So the basics of the super paved mix design is that it is based on uh, mechanistic so based on mechanistic concepts uh, 
Uh, the second is that it accounts for uh, material characteristics at different temperatures or different climate conditions. So accounts for accounts for um, climate conditions. Um, uh, it has enhanced traffic consideration. So traffic considerations. And also um, there is a, we, we've mentioned this before, there's a improved, uh, a new and improved binder grading system. So binder grading system. Or they call it PG or performance performance grading system. Uh, or PG classification, binder classification. Okay. 